Greetings from Southern California, USA. Today we're going to focus on pegmatites. Now some of us have heard that word. It's an igneous rock with large mineral grain sizes. But have you seen mineral grain sizes this big? Hello! Let's take a closer look. And as always, let's get a little context before we get into the details. I'm in the Peninsular Ranges Batholith in Southern California. Here's the Pacific Ocean. The Pe Peninsular Range Batholith, as you can see, is broken up into blocks. And I'm currently in the Paris block here, uh, specifically in Lakeview Mountain area, right there, Lakeview Mountains. And one thing you gotta remember about the Peninsular Range Batholith is it's really not like the Sierra Nevadas. The Sierra Nevadas, uh, it's granodiorite, it's homogenous, kind of anywhere you drive, for the most part, in that range, you're gonna find the same salt pepper looking granite. But as you can see by all these different colors, we have so much variety in the plutons uh, with different compositions, uh, ranging from gabbro all the way uh, up to tonalite and uh, granodiorite and, and monzen granite. And every, it's all over the place. Um, and it starts more mafic in the western region. And, and then as you move east, it gets more felsic, which makes sense because as the Farallon plate is subducting here, it's first going to melt through the oceanic area and it's going to mix some of the mafic minerals within those magma melts, uh, creating more mafic uh, plutons like gabbro. And then as it goes eastward, it's going to be coming in contact with more continental plate, melting that up, which is going to be high in uh, silica and feldspars. And so the plutons in the, in the eastern zone over here are going to be more felsic. And that's, that's where we are. We're actually in the western transition zone, right in this little pocket right here. Uh, so that gives you a little bit of context as to where we are. Now, I know you guys want to check out the crystals. I want to show them to you, but I just want you to appreciate what you're going to be looking at. So again, a pegmatite is just the name for an igneous rock whose mineral grain sizes or the crystals are in excess of like three centimeters. It's, it's pretty rare to, to find them that big. Uh, and there's a few ways this can happen. So uh, one way is a very slow cooling rate, right? So if a magma full of all these minerals cools very slowly, then those minerals have time to kind of move around, lock into different crystals, right? And create a long crystal grain size, right? So that's one way. Um, another way is if a magma is uh, injected with a lot of water, a water serves as a catalyst for crystal growth. And that's probably what we have here because this is an intrusion. So my guess and what, from what I've read here is that this was an existent Lakeview Pluton that was cooling, it, as it cools, it contracts and cracks. And then there's still magma below it that's high uh, in uh, silica, like uh, quartz and feldspar. It's, it's very felsic magma. And it's, if it's full of water, it'll make its way through those cracks and, it, and create these gargantuan crystal sizes. So that's probably what happened here. You had a, a late term. This was like the final gasp of this uh, magma emplacement, uh, so to speak. The, the, the pluton was cooling slowly, contracted, then this high water uh, saturated magma found that fissure and just shot up and probably expanded it and, and then cooled. But as it cooled, it created the most dramatic crystals. Okay, now we're going to check them out. Oh, and one more thing. Uh, so you kind of know what you're looking at. So this pegmatite is made of perthite. Uh, this is... Uh, the way I understand it, a combination of feldspars uh, that form. We have got quartz, and this is the jet black shoral, uh, also known as uh, tourmaline, black tourmaline. And then there's a lot of biotite out here. All right, let's get to the outcrop. All right, so here's a great example of some black biotite mica. You see those cleavage planes shining back at you? Look at the size of those, man. Jeez. All right, and that's not even the most impressive thing here. I'm just gonna keep this going. Look at this. Okay, so that's the black tourmaline, also known as shoral, and that crystal goes this way and this way. So that could go as deep as a meter. That's how big that crystal is. Here's another one. Uh, this is probably that matrix of that perthite, uh, the two different types of uh, feldspars. 
Uh, and also some quartz in there. Here's a, here's a patch of quartz right here. It's got that gray look. All right, here's some more uh, biotite. Look at that, uh-huh. All right, those are good. This is not even the most impressive part. Sadly, somebody chipped this out, but could look at the size of that shoral crystal, that tourmaline crystal. Look how big that thing was, but somebody chipped it out. Oh man, so pretty. Here we go, here's a good section. Check this out. Look at the size. Again, see, somebody chipped it out, but look at the size of that crystal. How big it was, probably in excess of a meter. Oh, beautiful. So we got, this is uh, this gray section right here. This is all quartz. You see that? Yeah, quartz. And then the bright creamy white next to it is gonna be your feldspar, right? Here's some more, a block of quartz right here. Right here, excellent. Again, this is all feldspar, but look at this. Ooh. Okay, so what I've read is that the feldspar fractured and was filled with the shoral, the black tourmaline. How cool is that? Okay, moving on. This is one of the most impressive spots right here. I gotta get closer. Don't fall. Okay. Oh my word. Okay, so these crystals, gosh, unfortunately are going this way and this way. So we're just, we're seeing the cross section of them. Some of them you can see, they were gonna splay that way. So you can see it, but how dramatic is this, huh? Look at the size of this guy. That's like almost 10 centimeters across. Wow. Ooh, look at that. Mm -hmm. Oh my word, I could be here all day. Very cool. And then up here we have more quartz. Okay, and then look down here. More of the black tourmaline, also known as shoral. Look at the size. I mean, I've seen it before, like maybe like that size, but this is ridiculous. Oh my gosh. Whoa, look at this. Oh man. Excellent. Okay, more cross sections right here. Very cool. Okay, uh, primarily quartz right here. Here's some more black tourmaline, aka shoral. These are cool, kind of like these fractures in the perthite, like over there, check that out. And then the fractures got filled in. Okay, I'm gonna make my way back down. I'm gonna keep it rolling, because I think, hopefully you're enjoying this. Um, oh, here we go, let's get a little bit more macro. Okay, so do you, do you see the distinction between the gray quartz here and the perthite, or the feldspars? You see that? How these minerals weren't all mixed up like a like a normal igneous rock that you see, it's all salt and pepper. No, look at these are all just separated. Oh, it's so awesome. Okay, let's uh, see if I can get down here. Unfortunately, well, everyone's got opinions about graffiti. I'm not really a fan, but especially on cool geology. To each his own. Okay, wow, come on. I'm gonna keep it rolling. Hopefully you're enjoying this. Let's start low. Excellent. I really love this quartz. Beautiful. Okay, again, more cross sections of huge crystals. Four or five centimeters? Seven centimeters? Here's a side section of it. Look at the size. Come on. Yes, this is awesome. Okay, down here, again, quartz. The light bright white is the, the feldspar. Quartz, quartz, feldspar down here, and the black tourmaline. I mean, come on. Okay, 
I'm gonna keep it rolling. I don't know when to stop. I'm not gonna stop. I'm just gonna keep it rolling because I think those who are interested in geology, especially uh, rare geology like this, you don't see this every day. This is magnificent. I just can't get over how, look at this size. Little pocket of quartz right there and amongst the perthite or feldspar. I like feldspar. I love the cleavage planes. It's just a, it's just pretty. I mean, you see what I mean? I just love how it fractures. Oh, look at that. Can you see how that's like coming at you? See that? <laughs> it's like light speed on the Millennium Falcon. <laughs> oh man. Okay, I wanna go up a little higher because there's some something real special up here that I read about. Again, more um, fractures in the perthite, but they're, they're like radiating. Check it. Uh, wow, I might have to go wide view here. Do you see how it's radiating? How excellent is that? Uh, the green appears to be lichen. So I guess I'm not the only one taking a lichen to this outcrop. <laughs> I'll be here all week. Woo, man. Can you believe this? Gosh, I hope you guys are appreciating this. I, I think you are, I can sense it. Because this is unlike anything I've seen. Again, kind of more radiating patterns here, huh? To kind of like... I don't know what that phenomenon is or what causes that. All right. Um, now, way up top, I'm not going to climb up there. I, I did bring my drone. Um, there's more of that radiating phenomena in the feldspar filled with either uh, biotite, mica, or the black tourmaline. Oh man, how pretty is this, huh? Look down here. Let's get some close-ups of this radiating stuff. Look at that. Check that out, huh? Excellent. Gosh, you can sense the pressure, right? Like, they're fracturing and just everything's getting ejected. Oh, this is cool. I missed this right here. Look at this little pocket of quartz. Oh, I just love feldspar. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it breaks along cleavage planes, right? That's probably why you have the uh, kind of linear fashion there. You just wonder why it's radiating like that. It's really cool. It almost looks like a plant. Okay. Let me give you a 360 over here. I haven't even been over here. This wall behind me is the one that just caught my attention. I was like, okay, starting here. <laughs> Don't fall. Oh, okay, get down. Okay. Unbelievable, huh? Let me back up and get you the whole, give you the whole outcrop look here. Look at this. Look at this. Unbelievable, huh? Wow. And see up top, now some of that's uh, graffiti. I think, uh, yeah, I think that one right there is graffiti, but look at the other ones. Those radiating, those are not graffiti. Those are like radial fractures in the perthite filled with either biotite mica or the black tourmaline. I will get my drone up there closer so we can check it out. Excellent. Even the detritus here is impressive. The stuff that's broken off. I mean, look at this. Look at the size of the biotite mica. Ooh, you can see the little cleavage, little pages of a book there. I mean, if I just found that, I'd be stoked. Look at that. Mm -hmm. I mean, look at the size of this one. 
Look at the size. Massive. Oh, this is actually a good example. Okay. So you see the little cracks that are filled? Well, this is what they look like. Edge on, right? That's what you saw up there. But they actually go into the outcrop. They're a sheet in a, in a, in a crack. They're filled in there. This one's all uh, biotype mica. Look at that. Mm-hmm. See the cleavage planes? Yes, sir. So, but the ones up here uh, seem to be like black tourmaline. But obviously some of them have biotype. All right. Let's see if we find anything else down here. Yeah. I mean, come on. That's awesome. Interesting stuff going on here. Looks like uh, feldspar and quartz kind of battling it out there as to who's on top. <laughs> uh, ooh, yep. That's uh, more biotype mica. Mm-hmm. Uh, let's see. What else we got over here? Oh, yeah. Look at that one. Excellent. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, there's quite a few over here. I mean, come on. That is beautiful. So beautiful. Excellent. Wow. Now, I'm not gonna take any of this stuff. I just take pictures and leave footprints. Pictures are great for rocks because you can take them with you, right? So I can take a thousand rocks with me uh, on my phone. I got a big hunk of quartz right there. Excellent. I think I've said excellent a lot. Apologize for that little word whisker. Woo! I, I just can't get over it. Oh, okay, so here's a good example. of the lake view pluton. This is biotite hornblende tonalite. So this is the majority of what the magma plume turned into. And I mean, this is even big mineral sizes, wouldn't you agree? I mean, you could really see uh, the hornblende and the biotite with the naked eye or the unaided eye. So that's, that's what the pluton's made of, but these mineral grain sizes have nothing on these guys. Hello. Wow. Can't get over it. All right. I am really interested in that up there. So why don't we whip the drone out and get a closer look.
across the stars Hold me without weight Mystify me with peace Lay awake and embrace the time Your memory's my resting place Deliver me from a cold dark space I just wanna Well, thanks so much for joining me as we checked out this amazing pegmatite within the Lakeview Pluton of the Peninsula Ranges here in Southern California, where we saw these magnificent crystals of shoral or black tourmaline. We've got perthite, a mixture of feldspars, and let's not forget the quartz as well. Just an excellent example of a pegmatite here in Southern California. We'll see you next time.